One of the things you see in Windows 7 is a modified taskbar and one of the things that goes on in the taskbar when you right mouse on an icon is that you get a thing called a jump list which really provides shortcuts into ways of interacting with that particular application. One of those shortcuts is a thing called jumping to destination. So these things that you see here are locally accessible files that have an association with the application we just right moused on. So for instance here it's notepad and text files. And if we click on one of those things it runs up the application and opens that particular file. Over on Messenger over here we see slightly different uh, things that we can jump to. These are not so much destinations in terms of files, these are things called tasks and you can see here I can change my messenger status by using this jump list. So what I want to show you here is how easy it is to do this if you've got Visual Studio 2010 Beta 2 and .NET Framework version 4. So let's take a look at that. Okay so let's just run up Visual Studio and inside of Visual Studio I'm going to make a new Windows Presentation Foundation project. So let's just do File New Project and we'll call this project, let's just choose the project type for a second. So I'm going to make a .NET Framework 4 application as we said. I'm going to make it a WPF application. We'll call it My App. Okay, let's go make that. Okay, so we've got My App here. Let's go and put a little bit of UI into this app. Let's just go and have a button and a text box in here. So we'll just go ahead and say grid.row definitions. And we'll have a, a row in here. We'll just make height equals auto on that thing. And we'll have another row definition in there. And let's go and put a button and we'll say content equals open file and we'll say click equals some event handler which we'll write in a second and then we'll have a text box which will be in the first row of the grid and we'll just say that the name of this text box is text display something like that. Okay great. Let's go look at the code. So when this application's first run up what I want to do is check my command line arguments. So let's say string args equals environment dot get command line arguments. Okay, so we've got that thing, that's easy enough to do. And then let's also go ahead and say that when the application loads, so let's say this dot loaded an event handler added to that so that when the application loads what we'll do we'll say if args dot length is bigger than one then we'll just attempt to open the file specified by args1. So we'll just say open file args1. We haven't written open file yet. Let's throw a stub in for that. What we'll do in open file here is we'll just say text display dot text equals file dot read oh file dot read all text from the file. It's currently called p but I'd rather refactor that. Let's just call that um, file name. And then down in our button click down here we use the standard file open dialog on Windows. So we'll just say open file dialog. Let's call that dialog. Let's create I can't spell dialog. Let's call that dialog equals new one of those. And let's say if dialog.show dialog equals true. So did the user click OK? Then we'll just say open file dialog.file name. Okay, great. We've built what we will laughingly call an application. Let's press F5 on it. So the application spins up and straight away you can see down here we've got a jump list with standard toolbar items on it. We can't really do anything about these toolbar items. Let's go and open a file. So on my desktop I've got a couple of text files. Let's go to the desktop. Let's pick up one.txt. We can see we read that. But you'll notice one.txt is not appearing on our jump list. Why is that? Okay, there's two things we need to do. One thing we need to do is stop Visual Studio fooling us. So Visual Studio by default for a new project like this one here when you come to debug it it uses a thing called the Visual Studio hosting process which you don't want for these kinds of applications so let's close that down and let's press F5 again in Visual Studio and let's see if that's made any difference. Let's open up the file, let's go for uh, I don't know desktop let's go to 3.txt let's look at our jump list, no it's still not working. Why is that? Well there's no association between my application and the .txt file extension. We need to make that association. So let's make that association. Let's bring up Explorer, let's go to my desktop, let's grab one of those text files and let's say open with choose a program. I go and browse for the program. My program is C temp my app and it's my app bin debug my app. There it is. We'll open that. I'm not going to make it the default. It doesn't have to be the default. It just has to have the association. Let's OK that. All right, let's uh, close that down. And let's go back over to here, press F5 again. 
applications running back up and you'll notice on the recent list is one.txt because we just opened it from the shell a minute ago. If we go and open the file here with let's say two.txt then down on our jump list is one and two.txt. If we go and open three.txt, I'm sure you've got the idea by now, down there is one, two and three. So this recently used file list is just working for us if we open a file from the shell or if we open a file from the application using the standard file open dialog. So if you work with the standard mechanisms you just get this for free anyway. Now of course down here on this um, list the user can always pin an item and it goes into a special pin section and then they just get that there stuck for all time unless they go ahead and unpin it later on. They can also remove items. So if we remove this item and let's remove this item and let's remove this item and then we go back to the um, the shell for a second. Let's go back to the desktop. Let's just go over to there. And if we go and open up 3.txt, for instance, and we open that with my application again. Sorry, wrong application. We open that with my app. There he is. Then there he is opening that app. And you'll notice that 3.txt is back on the recent file list. So by default, you're just getting this recent and pinned lists for free. And actually, you also get another list for free. And that's a list called frequent. So let's just close this down and start to think about how we can take more control of this. So let's go over to where the application is defined in this app.xaml file up here and let's define a jump list ourselves. We have a property jump list dot jump list and we can say this is a jump list. Notice on here there are events for when things are removed for instance so you can get those and hook up to them programmatically. But we'll just define a jump list with a jump path in it and that path will be C users my desktop and there's a file on there called 4.txt. No, 4.txt is what I want. OK, so let's press F5 on that. And what we've done at that point is changed the jump list. But if we take a look at it, you'll notice that the recent items have gone away. And now we just have this thing called tasks with 4.txt in. Now, 4.txt is not really a task. I don't really want that in there. Maybe this is some important document for me, and I want to put it in some special category. So you can create your own categories. On this jump path here, we could say custom category. Let's just let that wake up. Let's say important, something like that. That's my own stuff. And also notice that the recent items have gone away. So I want those back. Let's say show recent equals true. And we could also say show frequent equals true. Let's put that on there as well and press F5. And so if we pop back into that jump list now, let's see that we've got our frequent stuff, we've got our recent stuff, and we've got our important stuff, which is 4.txt. And if I click on that, the application springs up with 4.txt. So starting to take control of what this jump, jump list looks like. The other thing you can add to your jump lists here are tasks. We've already kind of seen these pop up already. So you can have a jump task. This is more about sort of running some piece of code, some executable. So we can say application path. Let's say C, program files, Microsoft Office. I've got Office 12. Let's say winword.exe, so a run word. And we'll say argument. So let's give it a document. C, users, mtalty desktop, my doc. Dot docx is a file. We can give it a title. We can say uh, run word for me. We can add a whole bunch of other stuff like icon resources and working directories and so on. So it's really about running something. We press F5. We should get a new task on our jump list. Run word for me. We click that. It launches word. And this is how you know Messenger is doing that thing to enable functionality in its own application by having custom tasks. So hopefully you get to see how easy this can be, at least to get started with in .NET Framework 4. Of course, you can also do this in code. So if you pop over to a piece of code and use the class jump list, which you can find in system.windows.shell, and you can go and say, get me the jump list for this application, get hold of the jump list that way. And you can go and say, set me the jump list and create a jump list for the application that way. And you can say, add to the recent category with a particular path. So you can do this programmatically as well as declaratively. So download Visual Studio 2010 Beta 2, .NET Framework 4 Beta 2, and give this a whirl on Windows 7.